Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 28th of September 2021 and we're producing our gold and silver morning update and price forecast. Gold and silver prices are down this morning again and frankly the outlook looks bleak indeed. So let's take a look and see why. <laughs> Welcome to Illuminati Silver. It's Tuesday, the 28th of September, 2021, 10.35 a.m. GMT plus one. And the weather is vicious. Yes, positively vicious. High wind, lot of rain, simply vicious. And we have some vicious news headlines this morning. European energy prices surge to records as supply crisis spreads. Plague of locusts next. Bank of England boss jokes in warning on UK's woes. It's hardly encouraging, is it? Stocks futures drop amid spike in treasury yields. What's going on? Let's take a look. European energy markets from natural gas to carbon permits jumped to records, signalling the supply shortage will get worse just as the winter season starts. Stockpiles of everything from natural gas to coal and Norwegian water for electricity production are dwindling, and there are few signs the situation will improve any time soon, as demand continues to roar back from a pandemic-driven lull. Europe's supply-demand balance will remain unusually tight heading into the winter, adding further price pressure to a market already at record highs. Many of the UK's smaller energy suppliers have collapsed, while some French electricity retailers are struggling to supply clients and are also at risk of folding. Meanwhile, Europe's miners have warned that the unprecedented prices could disrupt their shift away from fossil fuels. Wow, all those climate change advocates moving to natural gas initially may be sorry about this. At least there is plenty of coal in the world, although there may not be that many coal-burning plants for our electricity supplies anymore. This is the price we pay, but with the wind that we have outside, Certainly the windmills will be rolling fast. Not that they are particularly that efficient. What about the plague? The plague of locusts by the Bank of England boss. Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey jokingly warned of the mounting problems facing the UK economy by referencing the biblical plagues of Egypt. Speaking to economists on Monday evening, Bailey said so many challenges had emerged in recent months, including a run on gasoline stations and a loss of wind to generate energy, that he was tempted to ask, and when are the locusts due to arrive? The switch of demand from goods to services as COVID has faded in terms of its economic impact has not taken place to date on the scale expected, he said. Meanwhile, supply bottlenecks and labour shortages have weighed on output and are continuing, and in some cases increasing. A number of these supply bottlenecks are not obviously a product of COVID, though others are, he said. It's also possible that the economic fragility created by COVID has amplified the impact of other shocks. Either that or the gods really are against us. Not good news if the Bank of England governor is expecting locusts. Now, conspiracy theorists will be saying there is no problem. This is engineered to keep us all at home, to stop us interacting and developing our economies and could act as the causation of the global economic collapse that they have been predicting for the last 10 to 15 years. Peter Schiff, let's see that video. We can see it on the horizon. BBC News. Outlook bleak as petrol prices surge, says RAC. It's one of our automobile clubs in the United Kingdom, one of the largest. And we have found, driving past petrol stations, thank goodness we topped up before the crisis occurred, driving past literally queues and queues of people, and to an extent that some of the 
Stations have limited the amount of petrol you can have. Army put on standby to ease fuel crisis. United States, R.K. Kelly found guilty in sex trafficking trial. President Biden rolls up sleeve for his COVID booster. Chinese tech executive, freed by Canada, comes home. So, that's the news. There's a lot more really, but this caught our eye by Reuters. China energy crunch triggers alarm. Pleas for more coal. As a severe power crunch roils China's northeastern industrial heartland, senior officials face mounting pressure from alarmed citizens to ramp up coal imports thick and fast in order to keep the lights on, factories open, and even water supplies flowing. Goodbye, climate change. What's happening to the US dollar? Up, as we predicted, 93.56. It's going higher still. Energy, up. Nearly a dollar, not quite. WTI crude 76.30. Brent crude has now hit $80. We've said it's going into the 80s. There are some forecasters now saying that prices will go in up to $100 a barrel. We shall wait and see if that happens. But we can certainly see it well into the 80s. Of that we have little doubt. Equity markets. Well, yesterday the Dow was up 71 points or a quarter percent, but the S&P and Nasdaq were down a quarter to half a percent, respectively. Overnight, Nikkei down 0.2 percent and Topix down 0.3, whereas the Hang Seng was up 1.2. But as we can see here, European, Middle East and African markets and UK markets all down, ranging from a half to 1.3 percent. Economic news announced yesterday actually was not that bad. Durable goods orders at 1.8%, higher than expectations of 06 And core capital goods orders 0.5% compared with 03 the previous month. Now today we have Trading Goods Advance Report. The Schiller Home Price Index, which will be interesting. But the Consumer Confidence Index is the one we, we suspect will have the greatest impact for today. But then we have Jerome Powell testifying on COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, and Fed Governor Michelle Bowman speaking on bank supervision. That's going to be an interesting one for us, but it is getting into the weeds. Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic speaks on the outlook, and St. Louis Fed President James Bullard speaks to Filipino bankers. Remember, as we've said over the weekend and yesterday, Thursday and most importantly Friday are the two important day to day. So what's happened to gold and silver? Well, we said it. We can't see whilst we thought silver would edge up a little, which it did first thing. They, both gold and silver have now fallen back. Gold is down $8 over the last 24 hours at 1740 We just cannot see anything in the near future that's really going to boost gold and silver prices so if you bear in mind that friday's close was 1751 we're now at in fact it's gone down even more since i've refreshed the page it's now at 1738 that's down 13 dollars silver i better refresh the page to make sure it is up to date this has all happened in literally 10 minutes down 25 cents on the day at 22.33 if we compare that to Friday's close, 22.46, so that's down 13 cents. And as you can see, we said we expect it to rise initially, but we cannot see anything sustaining any elevation. There is little, apart from some form of geopolitical conflict or some form of major financial crisis, and even then, if that crisis is global, monies will just flock to the dollar, thereby strengthening it and putting pressure on precious metals. We would love to be able to turn around and say, do you know what? We think they're all going to double next week, like the pumpers do and have been doing. If you want an idea, an indication of when prices are going to fall, have a look at how many YouTube videos appear saying that the prices are about to double. Why? Because these people are linked to bullion houses and they're holding stock. 
and they're seeing these prices falling and they want to get rid of that stock as quickly as possible. We have been asked by quite a few people, why are the premiums still so high? Well, it's obvious why. It's not necessarily shortages. It's because prices are falling, dealers hold stock, they can't afford to take the hit on that stock, so they raise premiums. It's a very simple mathematical or economic formula. And they're desperately trying to sell the stock as quickly as possible because they also know prices are likely, not guaranteed, but are likely to fall further. Cryptocurrency is also taking a hit over the last 24 hours, down 4.75% with a market cap of 1.87, really moving to some degree in line with equity markets. And over the weekend, and we do urge you, please do listen to our weekly updates. They're pretty darned accurate. And we produce two, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. And as you can see on the screen, Gold and Silver Weekly Update and Gold and Silver Prices flat last week, despite crucial FOMC announcement. We've put links to each of these in the description box below. There's quite a lot happening this week. We've got the ECB making commentary today and tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see what Christine Lagarde has to say for the simple reason, again, dollar strength will undermine and act as a severe headwind for gold and silver prices. We have some difficulty in the marketplace because we have gas prices now rising. We have shortages of drivers which will increase prices, so inflation is likely to rise further. Or at least any expected fall will be diminished. That again will put pressure on the central bank to at least consider, and we're not saying it will happen because we don't believe that it will, but at least consider raising rates. And even if they don't, the market will do it for them. And that is not good for gold and silver prices short term. Thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up. If you don't like what we say, a thumbs down, but do comment. Press the bell sign and subscribe. Until next time. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.